Yeah, what I wanted to talk about was, you know, just to get some of this stuff, um, you know, straightened out, not only in my mind, but in the world's mind about what's going to come next and what I'm going to be doing and, and to what capacity. You know, I see something, uh, you know, the other day somebody wrote a message on my YouTube page again, and I'm not sure if it's the same person, but it doesn't really matter. It's the same idea and concept and, and something that I, I know a lot about, and they ask you know, why uh, do you never talk about spiritual warfare anymore? And, you know, the, for sure, the, the number one reason to that is, is that, you know, before people can start talking about going to battle or, you know, they need to defeat what's going on inside, you know, they need to win the war within. And, you know, so talking to them about external issues and what's going on in the external world is putting a burden on them that they're in no way ready to bear. And when you're an adept, you know that. So... For anyone asking that question, there's your answer. The second level of this is that, you know, I realize in my own journeys, you know, the higher you get into the vibrations, you can, the more you can see because you start becoming unified. So you're, us you're using all of the eyes in the world, like the eyes from people, the eyes from insects, the eyes from dolphins, and in their consciousness and their, their reality and what they discovered and even their power and their energy. So when you go into these higher frequencies, if you may, you know, this is what you experience but you also experience like this acceleration of your own consciousness and this animation of any kind of ideas or idologues that are going on in your your own consciousness meaning you get into a field to where anything that you think you begin to see and even if you're looking at something else it begins to change into that and you know and that that's the power of our being however how many people are really ready for that kind of ability? Like, we, we know it exists. I've experienced it myself several times. And in fact, it is what I work the most to push through when I'm in my own experiences. Because at, at that point where whatever you think is whatever is, if your mind is not balanced and harmonic, or if you're somehow having an issue holding the energy even. So a lot of people, when they talk about these situations, they never experienced them before. They don't know that. So when you get into that frequency, you also feel that frequency in your body. So it's extremely intense. It's like somebody just cut on a thousand volts inside of you. And this is what's giving the chakras the energy to give you this ability to amplify to this level of perception. So these are very simple mechanics. Uh, uh, so the thing is that... I find now that all of the things that I've seen and all the things that I, that I believed and everything that I know has to, actually comes to the forefront of a very creative imagination that has more than one channel on which to express itself. It has the image, so it can use its images and geometry as a canvas. But what's going to happen when all of these younger kids, like, you know, I see, again, the development in the game industry because that's where you still have millions of kids 
and basically the what we would need to get to before we can ever say that we're making an impact on expanding consciousness you have millions of these children in here watching these games and you know when you look at these games these days you know there's just you know these huge horrible monsters with their skin off and you know oozing at the mouth and large teeth and you know have you have these aliens from other planets and these hexagonal structures and you know all these geom this geometry and things being used in in, in a connection to alien and, and destruction and you must fight this and you must kill this and you know and then you're gonna die by it and you gotta spawn again and you come back you know you see intricate stories that go across different worlds and planets and other other constellations and systems and you see all this going on and this is all happening in the child's mind so what happens when that child gets to the phase of where I'm at right now where they have to be an adept and they have to know what comes next and what to do and when they turn on those abilities you have all of that that you put into your imagination and you put into your consciousness to now break through for you to get to all in the vein that all itself. So you see how this is really designed. So when you're talking about spiritual warfare, the war is going on now at this moment. And it's happening in a place that few adults or adepts are even paying attention. And that's with their children and their children's minds. And it's just, this is not about even, hey, turn that off. This is about, hey, we need to have a talk. And that's the big thing about this now. Right now, it's not about just trying to isolate your kids or isolate your family or isolate whatever from all of this that's going on in the reality because it's just secret importance. It's how to solve and how to neutralize the Really, it's a urn. It's a, a vase. Because the U and the V are the same thing. It means it has to receive. So the language is even set up to tell you you're here to receive. You're not the giver. So now notice how in then notice how then it makes who's the giver and receiver look entirely different. If a person saw it that way, then they would want to be the giver. They wouldn't want to be the one on the receiving end. So notice how, the, but the world is calibrated for everyone to want to receive something, give me something, rather than being a real creator and giving something or acting out. So this is the deep knowledge between the curve and the straight line, which all worlds can be created. This world is, is the code 10 or 0 1 because it's, that's how a computer works. It's only a switch, a dip of the switch. You like it or you don't, then you make your next choice comes forward. You like it or you don't, then your next choice comes forward. So our whole reality is based on whether we like something or we don't like it. In order to completely blow the reality, to get out of this madness of one than the other, like a teeter-totter, you ch don't choose. It's almost like you don't judge. Because when you choose, you're judging. And then when you judge, then you shall be judged. So basically, it becomes very tricky. The person starts to spin like a, what, what is this design that we're seeing you here. They spin in the wheel. This is exactly what a human is or is a human. It means that our body spins, our organs spin and cycle, and it makes a noise. And that noise works in the orchestra with the reality, thus creating the entire reality based on organic sounds. So any person that knows that can then go into the reality, into the program of the reality and begin to alter it through their own sounds. And that is really what Kabbalah is. When you know how to pronounce the proper word that actually opens up or cleaves the reality, it opens a door into the reality. And so, but this type of power is not just speech, but accompanied by the energy system within the body so that when the word is spoken, that it has the energy behind it to go forth. And that's why it says the, in the beginning with the word, and the word did not come back void because there were many words that came back void, meaning that they didn't ping. 
like what you saw with the bird that they heard. They let the bird out of the ark and they needed to see if it was going to land somewhere on the land somewhere and then come back. Basically, this is called pinging. It means that to see if you're strong enough to carry yourself into the next state of existence. And so this and this is governed by the level of spiritual energy that the person has. And so they they leak out of the palms of the hand and the soles of the feet. That's why it's called the soul. And in fact, the opposite dimension is so connected to us from the other side. It, you know, you can get your energy pulled from the opposite dimension by tampering with the wrong things and allowing it to, that to become your frequency. It's not another demon. What it is is you're on, you changed your frequency, so now you are susceptible to all things on that frequency. Like I say, it comes with the territory. So if you live in a state of fear and darkness, etc., that frequency has other creatures that live there that have chosen also to live on that same frequency. So that's why it's very easy to interface and for them to interface with the individual that is on that level. And so all of this is so precise. It is exactly the laws of the universe and how it works. And if for some reason at any point someone thought that the universe would ever deviate from these laws, they would not even be in existence. It doesn't happen. The universe has laws that it never deviates from because here's what happens. Inside the body, each organ is based on the planet and each planet in our mythology is the God. So let's say, for instance, the God of the heart. What happens if the God of the heart doesn't like the God of the liver and decides to dip? Just decides to flat out leave, I'm gone. What happens to the rest of the body? <laughs> it doesn't work. 